sorry for the late start tonight. Um, so I was just, uh, my eyes were feeling a little under the weather. They were a little uh, itchy, but uh, I wanted to continue painting some of uh, Lex, uh, Lexcom miniatures. Uh, we were starting to paint through uh, the models we'll be using for our uh, campaign. We're going to try this. I know some of these models are smaller format, so we're gonna. I'm gonna try my best to uh, keep them as bit as much as I can. Uh, as much as I can in the camera's focus, because I know it's like really tiny stuff that we're painting. So it's always a hit or miss when we're doing that kind of stuff. looking at better days. Yeah. And again, I'm sorry guys for the the hour late start. I know I said I was going to start at 10 o'clock tonight, but uh, it was just a, a tough night, a lot going on. say for folks that weren't familiar from last time these are all from a very cool guy on Etsy uh, Lexcom miniatures and uh, I grabbed a bunch of his minis uh, for our homebrew uh, homebrew sort of like uh, essentially Disney D&D &D campaign so I had not finished up. I mean, for the most part, I'm 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 actually almost done with this Cheshire Cat model. So we're not going to have too much more left on him. I want to do a little bit of cool stuff with his eyes. Um, so yeah, with these models, I got everything from Alice in Wonderland stuff to. Uh, to uh, very armed princesses, to uh, you know a few different things. And these are gonna be all minis we're gonna use in our homebrew campaign. Which uh, while I'm doing the paint on these guys, we can, we can definitely talk a little bit. We can definitely talk a little bit about some of the homebrew ideas and how I'm going to be incorporating some of these characters because, of course, some of these will be playable characters, some of them will be NPCs, uh, and we're going to be working through to figure out a little bit more how we're going to do that. Um, but like I said, I am the Cheshire Cat was pretty much a done deal. I had him pretty finished the last time because these models are a lot on the smaller side. So, so I wanted to point that light in the eyes. I'm pretty happy with that miniature kind of the way it is. Um, what I was thinking would be kind of fun. If I wanted to.
I wanted to bring a little bit of fun into that mouth. So it looks a little bit more Cheshire, checkered or Cheshire. Oh, that actually looks pretty cool. I actually like the way that it looks. I thought I'd do a little bit of like hair or fur kind of effects on here. Just a little bit of highlighter details on there. Oh, I like that. I like the way that looks. All right, sorry, guys. Give me a sec. So you guys can see, I think that Cheshire Cat looks pretty stellar and awesome. I'm going to put that with our done pile of models. All right, so let's get our next contestant. Who do we want to paint now? Oh, I got to move my stuff. Whoa, this is not going to work. Sorry, guys. I, Like I said, I had just a little bit of a tougher day today. So I am not as ready as I normally am for painting videos. Usually I'm very ready to go. And I'm just doing a little bit of cleaning. I'm sorry, you guys are seeing dead space. I hate that in a video. Um. Uh, who do we want to paint next? Uh, let's paint. Let's do. Yeah, let's do a princess. All right, let's have some fun. <laughs> I love having my desk all set up so I have just like a bigger area to work. All right, so you guys can see this is one of our princesses and it is very, very much Belle from Beauty and the Beast. But what I like is, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a subtle tilt to the X-Men in there. And she's got like claws. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. Um. All right, well, I know for a fact we're going to do yellow for most of this. We're just blocking out the yellow color on Belle's dress. And she is a dense, thick model. So she is not, uh, no, no problem with like, So all I'm doing right now is just getting that base yellow tone, and then I'm going to go in. Which is kind of funny because she has that, like, tilt to Wolverine, which they definitely, the model maker did on purpose, I could tell. Um, and I'm actually going to paint her essentially the colors of Wolverine, which I think is kind of interesting and funny. She's definitely going to be walking away with, like, a Wolverine paint job a little bit. Because for folks that don't know, 
Uh, Belle wears a golden dress in the movie, so I'm going to really, really kind of lean on that. Um, I'm going to look at some reference for her as well, but I don't think I really have to. Because she's got a pretty simple color scheme. Like, the dress is essentially one color. Um, I'm going to specifically leave... Um, I'm going to leave that sash alone for a minute because I'm pretty sure that is... I might play around with that being a slightly different color. And I just want to get all this pooling and pull all that paint down because I don't want... I don't want to see uh, all that color be that just yet. Yeah, it's funny. A lot of these paint... A lot of the, uh, a lot of his miniatures, they are going to be very simple to paint because with the contrast, it's going to do a lot of the work for me. Where you can, and it's funny. I just recently, I just recently learned a different term to refer to contrast stuff, which is. I never thought of it as a speed paint paint, but apparently that's what some people call it, and I never heard of it referred to in that term. But it apparently is called that. It's called they're 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 marketed or thought of by people as speed paints. Which is true. Yeah, these, these models are nuts. They're just, like, a lot of fun. And I cannot wait to paint all of these and get um, the whole collection together and, like, have all these characters pop up in the homebrew campaign. Um, and I'd love to talk to you guys about, you know, so as we're painting, and I said this the last time we were painting, you know, I'd love to talk to everybody about, like, homebrew techniques because obviously one of the cool things about this is to come up with your own rules and characters. And we're gonna, like, I'm gonna be using these models to help me tell a story. And I, I love going over and talking about, like, the technique to do all of that. Um, hmm. How do I wanna do this? So what I'm trying to figure out in my head But yeah, I never I never really thought of them as speed paint. I never, I never thought of them as that kind of painting, but they are, because it's... This is where we're gonna have some problems yeah whenever i do skin tone yeah i gotta use a better i have to use i have to use the bigger brush i can't use a small brush because if you use the small brush with that color uh it always turns into always turns into the same problem which is you end up with a model
And what's cool about these models, so these are these are part of Lexcon's, um, he calls them ugly princesses. Um, and they're very, very cool because they give you this just, you know, obviously they, and I, I always like to do this. I always like to clear up some potential missteps or misconceptions about these models, which is, of course, they are based off of the, um, They are based off of the Grimm's fairy tales or fairy tale representations of these characters. They are not, even though my um, aim and my goal is to use them in a, call it Disney, uh, Disney D&D &D mashup campaign. Um, they are, they are not, the model maker does not claim that these are Disney models. He's not advertised them as Disney models. He is basing this off of the literary characters uh, and Grimm's fairy tale characters. So, I like to just uh, put that out there. In case, in case for some reason one of these days I get that famous that Disney is watching my stream, I don't want them to come with pitchforks to come get this uh, wonderful model company and gentleman. Uh, because that is not the case. Um, he is making just really awesome models. Again, emphasizing the fairy tale aspect of these characters and the. the literary appearances of them, which we always forget that. People will very often forget that um, all of these characters came out of books. So although the Disney versions of them might be something that you are very tied to, um, that that is not the only uh, area that we see these characters. So what I'm doing now is I'm just cleaning up some of the lines here. While I give that skin tone a little bit of time to dry. And you guys will see, I'm gonna do a lot of different mechanics in the dress itself to portray, uh, to portray some of the fabric and so there will be a very clear And again, all I'm doing here is just, as I do on every model, I will, I will uh, just go over that with the contrast to bring to bring some of that detail out. this and I need a white.
And for all you folks out there, and you're going to say, what kind of Disney fan are you asking this question? But am I wrong in my assumption that, um, that Belle has brown hair? I think Belle has brown hair. I don't think she has black hair. I, I could be wrong. yellow in it. I may or may not like what I'm doing right now. We're going to see in a minute. That's growing on me. It is. I actually like it. I have to speed. I have to sort of speed paint it because. And I want to. I want to give Lorcom Miniatures a little bit of a shout out for this. And also. So the reason I'm doing this. Not that the model doesn't have details. Because it does. But it, it's, it's details are a little on the subtle side. So I'm just doing this to to give it a little bit more of an idea or an identity so that the top of the dress has a little bit of transition from a lighter color to another one. So you guys can see that there are ridges in there. That's what I should have did. That, these are the lines I was trying to make, but... So I'm just trying to suggest the divisions of the dress. So it's got like a little bit of pop detail to it. Just kind of playing around with some color ideas. I'm going to probably have to do...
you guys can start to see what I'm start to see what I'm trying to sort of create in here to kind of make it look a little bit more interesting. Now the problem is the orange that I have. It's like very, very not the consistency it should be. So I think this is going to turn into... Well, the idea was to use it so the idea was to like layer the dress a little bit I don't know if I like this idea. I mean, it's kind of working actually. It's kind of working to my benefit. guys think i mean like i think it actually has some cool I, I think it's got some cool stuff to it i'm gonna i'm gonna probably just use the yellow on the bottom of the dress just to so yeah you guys can kind of see what the approach or the idea was was to use this to get the flows of the dress by building up some of that line work, which actually I think it works pretty well. I, I do think it looks kind of cool or just more interesting because obviously Belle's dress is all like very like one but by bringing in the rest of that tone we're creating a texture we're creating flows in that dress so I sort of like how that is and I sort of like how that's how that does that just by building up the contrast paint a little bit curious to know what you guys on the chat actually think of the color scheme or the choice of the technique. I'm 
mean, I think it looks kind of nifty and cool. I don't know. Or for some of you out there, you might think it looks messy. I don't know. You know, the issue with sometimes when you go with indie models is that if you're using, you know, the, the paint system that you normally use or whatever you want to call it, not that the, not that models don't lend themselves to some of your quicker paint systems, but you may find, like I'm finding, that they don't necessarily, um, They may not work as well with those paint systems. Um, I'm going to make it look like she has gloves on. Like she had her formal wear, her formal wear gloves on, and then she's got the blades on there as well, which I think is kind of a fun way to do it. And then we'll have the blades be a tie. And again, just giving her kind of that like Wolverine nod. I think it's like super amazing and awesome that like she has I really like how the dress came out yeah I actually really like I really really like the paint job on the dress I think it actually came out really really nice just introduce some cool colors and some cool stuff into that um hmm and like i said these are the ugly princesses line of miniatures that he does Sorry guys, I'm just checking another model while I was looking at this. Ah. It's probably dry paint on this brush at this point. And I apologize that these models, they are small scale. Um, they're typical like D&D &D si size models. Um, so it can be tougher to see them on camera. Um, and it, did anybody find out the answer for me on the, does Bell have, uh, brown hair? I think the answer is that she does. She's got brown hair. All right. So yeah, let's do, let's do the skeleton hoard for her hair.
find the skeleton horde works really, really well. Starting to Yeah, I want to I want to do this as like a uh You guys will see why I'm doing this because this will give a good nice like base tone to her hair and then I can go from the base tone see that this model very quickly is coming together like again the the uh the contrast paints for this type of project are like super perfect for uh for painting in this so they're like super perfect for that project um guys i know i'm like i feel like i'm not holding the model like very well with the camera i'm still trying to learn how to use my new camera setup the right way um and it's no fault to uh lorecon miniatures but it's just they uh their mo their models are just a smaller scale so i have to hold them up to the camera for you guys to see the detail work and that sometimes works well for my detail sometimes it doesn't it actually makes it look worse so i have to like and i love that i love that he used like an x-men insignia I'm, I'm gonna paint that differently, but like for right now, I just want it to look like a metal or something on her chest. to yeah that I'm gonna actually have to like buff out with like a little bit more highlights because like right now it looks really really intense over there
sorry guys, it, it, my thing has trouble focusing on the model sometimes. Oh, I'm loving the way that this is turning out already. And I haven't completely painted it yet. Like I said, it's just amazing to me how fast I can paint these because, you know, I said it in one of my other videos. It's like, I am I know a lot of these characters' color schemes very well. So, like, it takes me a little bit, but for the most part, I have, like, in mind a pretty good idea of what I want to do. And again, we're painting Bell. I know she's got a golden dress. I don't want to paint that gold. I want to paint that something else. Um, Disney princesses. Let's see. Uh, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? Oh, I missed a couple spots. I wasn't feeling well tonight, so I probably should have just, like, not done this, but... But I put up, I put up on my Facebook page I was going to be working on these, and I felt bad because I missed the 10 o'clock mark I was supposed to start at, so... I'm like, you guys have to get some model painting. I haven't done model painting, and I got plenty of models to paint because we got to get this homebrew going and like I've even started talking about the actual homebrew itself so the theory behind what I want to do here is we're going to use all these minis in that homebrew campaign and I want to take obviously some of these minis are going to be playable characters um, but we're going to do it in such a way that it's going to be like a one uh a little bit more run like D&D encounters. So they're going to be like more episodic, like more like one shots. Um, so that players can cycle through through characters they're not necessarily going to play the same characters all the time um and that's going to allow flexibility because the group that i'm going to have is going to have a lot more people in it um so it'll give them the flexibility to be able to i know this is going a little off script for bell but I just want to break up the colors. I don't want... want to make it a little bit more interesting when you look at the model because right now it's not
so the idea behind this whole uh, the, the princesses is that they're going to be an adventuring team. So all of the princesses are going to be They're going to be like questing adventurers. So they're going to be an adventuring squad that um, our players are going to actually play as. So it's going to be very interesting because some of them are going to have magical user uh, abilities. There's going to be different factions. I have a bunch of different things planned. Um, and it's going to be a large scale paint. So. I really like how we're how this is already like coming into focus. It's great. All right, so you guys will see. I, I'm. I'm gonna go a little bit rogue on this. I came up. Yeah, there we go. So now she's got like, yeah, I like that. I like that. I like her having like battle paint on. So almost like. I like the way that that looks. It actually looks really cool. Okay, all right. Yeah, I knew I knew I was gonna get this done quick. This might be another three model night, guys. Oof! Imagine if I get three models done tonight. Oh, that would be so hot and awesome. But look at the deep. Like, just look at how awesome this model is. All right, let's get. Yeah, let's get our snake bite for the leather straps. There's actually not much I have to do on this model. It's it's a very, I mean, besides maybe working out that skin tone. So we got the, got the straps on there. Ah, oh, this looks awesome. I love the way this model looks. It looks so cool.
So you can see I'm going over it with the snake bite just to bring out a nice dark tone in there. Yeah, for the most part, the top of the hair doesn't really need it. This was the really the spot where I think it needed it more. And then little areas that I want to pop it in. anywhere where there's like a break in the hair oh sorry guys wherever there's a break in the hair that's where i want to put that in there yeah lexcom miniatures they're awesome guys i actually recently was watching a um a video with uh tabletop time and they actually were considering uh showing some of his models on there too they were actually looking through uh his model stuff and uh that was some really cool stuff that they showed and they actually were considering using his stuff in a project so um if you know tabletop time it's pretty cool they're an australian based uh youtuber and one of them is one of the gentlemen his name is jazza he's a really cool creative guy and then his uh his cohorting cohort the cohort in crime on the channel is Dave uh, and they do some really cool videos and they they were actually looking at uh, his website on there and I thought that was pretty cool because I was like ooh And I, I'm sad they didn't pick his stuff for the particular project they were looking for. Because so far, I am super digging his models and super digging uh, this, the the just the the style, the you know how easy they are to paint. Um, Yeah, and I am I am 100% a believer in this uh, model in this uh, Etsy shop. So uh, check them out. They got so much stuff. He's I mean I love I love his shop because it's got you know stuff like what I'm working on now, which is you know you might say is somewhat niche. Um, but these have like so many uses because obviously I'm using them for the homebrew campaign. But uh, I, I plan on using these as like star players in Blood Bowl as proxies um, and as permanents for certain characters. Because as much as I love GW, um, you know, their, uh, their model selection, it's for Blood Bowl, I, I love some of the models that they have, but you know, they, they go to that that crazy model where you have to go to Forge World. 
to, uh, you know, to get these models. And I'm sorry, but I just don't, I don't believe in that. I don't think that that's right. Um, because, you know, you're already paying, like, and Forge World, the prices are so, um, they're, they're so out of whack. It's, they're so out of whack. It's like unbelievable. You're paying like triple the normal GW price in some cases for a model that I'm sorry is like not, I don't think is like anything to write home about. It's not like it's, it's. You know, um, and some of the star players, the poses and stuff that you see are just like not 100% great. They're not like super duper awesome models. You know, some of them are, are good. I mean, the newer the newer ones that they did. The newer things that they did, you know, they have some merit to them, but they're not, um, they're not as, um, like they're good models, but they're not like, they're not like the, the like the end all be all of model making like i I'm, I'm still leaving the site wanting more like a good example is the new frankenstein model that they did like it's not a bad model but at the same time it's not like it's not a uh it's not like a super amazing model it's not like i i walk i walk out of the site and i'm like ooh. I got to get myself that model. Like, I kind of look at it and go, you know, it's all right, but the pose is a little bit more. You know, it's a, the pose is a little bit more stagnant. Certain aspects of the model are not as, as amazing. Like, you know. And obviously, the biggest thing that annoys me about the model is that you're paying... Um, that triple the cost price and you're not getting like everything you want out of the model like it's different if it would be different if like I was paying all this money for the model and then I'm getting like a really insane dynamic juxta like juxtaposition pose of a model and that was me just fixing the pooling and that's what I love you can mix white so I was able to fix all that bad pooling that I had a minute ago and there's definitely a few little touch-up areas I got to do but for the most part I think uh, Bell is actually done which I was a little on that speed side Pete uh, it was uh, a little on the speed painting side i did sort of speed paint her um a little bit which i didn't realize that i was i did not realize that i was doing uh something in that vein until, like I said, I watched some of these other YouTubers, um, and they referred to the paints I'm using as speed paints. I didn't know that until I uh, until I took a look. So I'm just doing like some last minute, just little touch ups. Some little touch up, some little touch ups, and emphasis on different aspects um this came out these look awesome 
And I'm telling you, the contrast paints, they look real good on these models. They look really good, and they give a really good effect to them. Um, so I'm really, really happy with the results and how they turned out. Um, and I love that it has that Wolverine. And actually, to go along with that... Yeah, there we go. I'm going to give her the same detail I gave my other X-Men characters that I painted for my Marvel Crisis Protocol ones. Not that I would use her in that game, although I think it would be kind of funny. I think Belle is actually finished. Let's take a look at what Belle looks like. So finish Belle, guys. Oh, one last thing I gotta do. For her to be truly, truly finished. gave her some pupils, white pupils, which I think look awesome. All right. Sorry, guys. I just saw one little touch-up piece. So all I was doing was getting some of the details repainted. The claws and some of this uh, were not completely painted. So I had to just go back in and make sure that I didn't miss any of those lines. But that's Bell all painted up and ready to go. I love how that turned out. That looks awesome. All right, let's put Bell. I like how my finished painting pile is like really coming along. All right, where are we at time-wise? An hour and... All right, we'll, we'll go for a half hour more because I can't do a long video tonight. Who else should we paint? So we did a princess. Oh, my God. Let's do, let's do one of the big bad guys for the campaign, or at least one of the, one of the, the bad forces for the campaign. And that's going to be Maleficent. All right. So I got to sort of figure out where I want to go with this, because Disney's Maleficent, the animated version of Maleficent, you know, had a very, very specific, iconic look. 
But uh, this model goes a little bit in a different direction. So I want to, you know. It would help if I could actually spell her. Because if we go with Maleficent's like true colors, Maleficent is always traditionally like all black. So you'd have black, and then the inside of her robe would be purple, because it's the it's the accent of her robe that gets purple, not her actual robe. Um. So I could go that route. Now, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So I'm just kind of looking at this for a minute. Okay, so, and then we have the cape. And then what, and then in the cartoon, I mean, if we go with the Disney way of drawing her, Maleficent had that really like pale skin. She had all she kind of had a vampiric skin. All right, so you know what I think we're going to do? I think we're going to do Maleficent as this dress is going to be purple cuz I want to do something with purple. I want to do something with color. So I'm going to make her purple. I'm going to make her horns black like they're supposed to be. The model is too detailed. So I have to I have to do too many details on this model in order for it to work. Um oh man. Alright. I think this is the right move to do for her because then and I mean it makes sense because a lot of these villains and a lot of these like characters like you know obviously You know, I wanna, I want it, I definitely wanna take, I wanna take some of what's there, but at the same time, I wanna make choices that are gonna be interesting and cool. Well, 
that's okay. It'll be it'll it'll turn into black. Well, also don't forget that and I said this before that like these are these characters and these models were more so based off of the Grimm's fairy tales telling of these stories. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because when you talk about Grimm's fairy tales, some of the stories, uh, if not a good majority of the stories they're all they, they are all different so it wasn't until later on in uh the history of fairy tales that the um that the more modern telling of these stories um became the ones that most people heard because the Grimm's fairy tales were they were called Grimm's fairy tales oh you're gonna do that to me where you made it look like separate fabrics but then when I go underneath you're gonna make it look like this ah uh, all right well then my idea might not work I'm gonna see yeah because when I went underneath I was I I was greeted by the realization that I don't think these are because what I wanted to do was I wanted to do the inside fabric to be the purple and then the outside fabric to be the black so I could have that sort of like homage to the Disney coloring, but um, create a little bit more of an interesting color palette. Um, so the model would have a little bit more depth. But yeah, with the Grimm's fairy tales, they were they what they were designed to do was they were designed to be cautionary tales for children so they were they were gruesome and brutal because they were they were meant the original Grimm's fairy tales were meant to scare children they were not meant um, to give children like you know hope or fantasy they were they were meant to terrify them so that the lesson in the so that the lesson in the story was being um so the lesson in the story was actually being like followed by the children Um, so yeah, they were meant to be these extreme cautionary tales of, um, you know, kids getting in, kids getting in situations that, you know, they, uh, they suffered. You know, so much so that, like, I think if I'm not mistaken, in the original Grimm's fairy tale, um, like, uh, what is it? So, like, Red Riding Hood, like, I'm pretty sure the wolf wins. Or no, I'm sorry. The wolf, the wolf doesn't win, but he. Uh... No, actually, wait a minute. I think I am right. I think the, I think the wolf does win. If I remember correctly, the wolf does actually like eat them, and they just die. And the whole idea of.
And the whole idea of the story is that is not to trust strangers. That was the whole idea of it. If I'm not mistaken, and I think like, what is it, Hansel and Gretel in the original like Grimm's fairy tale version like they get eaten by the witch so they don't kill the witch the witch eats them if i'm if i'm not mistaken it's it's so they're all like again they're all supposed to be they're all supposed to be these cautionary tales so that children so children would be like actually scared to go in the woods actually scared to do anything Oh, yeah, and there's, like, crazy stuff. Like, if I'm not mistaken, the, um... In the original story of Cinderella, like, the, uh... The stepsisters, like... The stepsisters, like, actually cut off... Like their toes to try to fit in the slipper, and there's like all of this crazy. Because that's another thing. All of the all of the original Grimm's fairy tales were like really uh, also gruesome. Like they were not, um, they were not like, you know, for the faint of heart. They were like really over the top and crazy. So we're not, I'm not seeing the same level of folks watching these videos as I did the Warhammer stuff. Okay. Oh. So guys, we're painting up Maleficent. This is an Etsy model from Lexcom Miniatures. Um, and I'm trying to... I'm trying to play around with the paint scheme to give it like and these are minis that I'm painting for a homebrew campaign that I'll be doing uh, for a mashup of Disney and um, D&D so we're going to be using these characters in there and this is actually going to be one of the big bad characters of the campaign. An obviously higher level magic user. And one of the leaders of a of obviously one of the bad factions that our heroes may uh, encounter in this adventure. But we're going to be running it as like a bunch of one shots. So it's going to have a very encounters feel but set in a homebrew universe which is going to be very cool. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually working on it with two other folks uh, for storytelling purposes. Um, so we're going to create a homebrew world that we can just kind of set our stories in. Um, and I'm going to do pre-made characters. So there's going to be pre-made uh, characters for our players to, to try out and play. So they can cycle through different characters 
uh, throughout the different weeks that we're going to be playing. Oh, is that like hair? All right. Yeah, so the way that this model is laid out, that's actually hair. Well, I'm going to make it black anyway. Just trying to like block this out and get that color on that part because um this is going to be an interesting model paint because there's a lot of like fine small detail on this model so i have to like figure out where i'm going with all my detail and my paint Obviously, you can start to see the Maleficent uh, vibe getting in there because I'm trying to, you know, give us that color tone of the purples and the black. But I'm also trying to, like, figure it out with the model. Since, you know, this is, uh, I've said it a couple of times, these models are more uh, in line with the Grimm's fairy tale versions of these characters not the um disney versions of these characters because obviously lexcom miniatures if they were to uh do something like that they would get in you know they might have some issues so i always like to just tell people that these models are uh inspired by the grimm's fairy tale versions of these stories um because a lot of us don't remember that before the versions that you are more familiar with and definitely the ones that the Disney films were based off of, um, there were Grimm's fairy tale versions of all of these stories. And the Grimm's fairy tale versions of these stories were very different. <laughs> yeah, they were they were not messing around um, and they were a lot more violent, a lot more... Uh, different in their storytelling um and that uh man i'm really like struggling to figure out what or how I want to do some of this other undertone. Um, I may have to diverge from this idea because um, the issue I'm running into is I just don't want the model to look too bland. And I think if I keep going the route that I'm going, um, like parts like this, like the top part, are going to look fine. But, um, I don't know how I'm going to differentiate the inside of the black cape with uh, the purple. So I'm a little concerned. So I'm just concerned with how that's going to block out because, you know, I'm going to have to go inside of that cape. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that very well. So I may have to make some decisions where I, you know, emphasize different parts. Or maybe I do a gray inside. I don't know. I have to figure this out now. I know definitely this has to be black. That's, that's, a, that's a yes for that. 
Like this, this 100% has to be black. Because that's going to help break the model up a lot. And then it's going to help to break up these colors a lot as well. And then I do have a dragon model coming, which I will paint up to look like the transformation of her. So I'm just like kind of refining it, just trying to find where I want to go and push certain things and where I don't want to do that. I'm doing now is I'm giving her like a black trim. Because I gotta, I have to create like a nice silhouette for this model, and I want, I think if I like emphasize a little bit of her like, of her grandness. I think that's gonna go a long way. I think that's gonna be like a nice, I already like the way that this is looking already with the silhouette of that. So that looks really, really nice. Um, and looks, you know, yeah, it's a good, interesting balance and mix so far, but I do think I'm going to have to do like, a. mix in there. Yeah, so what I could do is I could like mix in some of the white and we can do like a gray in that oh no it's getting clumpy oh no my white's getting clumpy no 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 don't do that
suck. Come on. Yeah, I think that gray is the right way to go. And then I can, from that gray, I can, uh... Sorry, guys. I'm, like, having a terrible time tonight. Oh, man. Yeah, it's perfect. That gray is perfect, because that... Yeah, then from that gray, I can build off and, like, do some cool stuff to the... Ooh, I have an idea. All right, I, I might have another idea, which might be very cool. All right, I love it already. I love it. I love it. This is good. This is good. So far, I like my color choices. Um, we got to obviously do a lot more detail to her. Just going for a little bit of a darker tone. Just to pull this out a little bit more. do that. I always... Alright, this looks awesome, dude. I love... Alright, we're gonna we're gonna have some more fun with this, but this is gonna be, like, super cool. I'm liking the choices already, and I definitely will have to play more, but I like where I'm going with the model. There's definitely some stuff I want to do, but the idea that I had, and I'm gonna just test my idea right now. So let me get my brushes all cleaned. Most importantly, my my uh, my small brush. And let's see if an idea works. And if it works, then that's awesome because then I've gotten my I got my three color ideas all in one shot. Oh, I knew it was going to work. That's awesome. So that 100% worked. Yeah, so what I wanted to do inside of there, and it worked perfectly, was to put in a little bit of spectral... So a little bit of the spectral green. So she has a little bit of that green coming out. And then I'm going to use that spectral green in other parts of the model. Specifically, the part that I wanted to use it on was her sword. But 
because we're gonna I'm gonna in the campaign I'm gonna make her her like wand sword essentially because that's what that's gonna be uh, I'm gonna make that have a special characteristic Ooh, that's perfect So we'll get that we'll get that sword all and now it, it'll have that like feel of the Disney character because they tend to use those those uh if you're familiar with Maleficent in any like Walt Disney World merchandise or anything um they love to use this like spectral spectral green they're huge fans of it. I almost want to see in bits if I have anything that looks like casting or like a magic spell. guys I think we're gonna I'm gonna call it quits for right now um because it's getting a little bit late on my corner of the world uh and I know I got a little bit of stuff done I mean I know we didn't get the whole like paint and shebang done um I mean I did paint a whole model tonight so I don't feel like I'm leaving you guys with nothing we got through like two and a half models. So just as a reminder, there's the bell we painted up tonight. I really like the way she came. Oh, all right, hold on. Just realized two things I didn't paint. All right, so here is the finished bell. We, I had to paint her black ribbon, which I totally forgot is in her hair. Uh, we can see some blood splattering on there. I love this. She's got the war paint on. She's ready to party. She's ready to come after you with those uh, Wolverine-style claws, which I love this model. I think that's amazing. Um, yeah. Very simple paint job on our Cheshire cat. So you can see him all finished and ready to go. Um, and then we did get a little bit started on Maleficent. Not a little bit. We actually got a lot of her painted. Um, but we'll have a little bit more technique and things we got to do to her. So um, stay, stay tuned. Um, and I may, and I may, I may go as crazy as to do another one of these tomorrow for part of tomorrow. Like we'll go on for maybe an earlier stream than I normally do. Um, Ow. As I punch my cabinet. I know, I keep saying that we're going to be finished, and then I never finish. Alright, so you guys can see, we started painting up Maleficent. Um, started to get our basic color idea down. Um, obviously, there's a little bit more detail. We're going to give her that pale skin, but we started doing some of the detail on her cloth and clothing. Uh, I'm going to go back in there and obviously get um, more stuff done, but I'll also start doing some more like effects to it. 
but already digging where we're going with it and um it's just a very interesting model because it's a very different look for maleficent and obviously not necessarily in the same vein as the disney maleficent and, a lot, and that's what i like about all these models is that you know i'm gonna spin it with the paint a little bit to make it look like that but it is it is not by any means that it was designed to be those things because like i said it's really taking its cue from the grimm's fairy tales um and again i should mention that for lexicon miniatures this guy uh is not a believe a current miniature that can be purchased um lexicon was nice enough to send me a sample that i was able to paint up and i wanted to paint one of the samples up because i wanted to eagerly send it over to the guys over there because i know they want to see some of the paint samples i've been sending over what i've been painting uh, the Bell, you can buy Bell, either Bell herself or Bell and the Beast. And I do have the Beast to paint as well. Uh, same thing with the Alice in Wonderland miniatures. You can buy the separate Cheshire Cat, Mad Hatter, Alice, uh, Red Queen, and White Rabbit. All the separate models. Or you can do a bundle where you can get them all together. Very, very cool. Very, very super awesome. Um, and I love this... Uh, this other line this was a previous line of models or miniatures that they did and i love these designs it was nice to, have to send me over one just to play with so uh as always guys thank you for watching if you enjoyed the content please consider following the channel uh if you want to see us paint more uh we paint mondays uh we'll do marvel crisis protocol models so for folks that love that game or just want to see some really cool marvel crisis protocol models painted and i'll give you guys an example of one of them this is ghost rider that we did last couple of weeks and you can see just how this this model came out so cool and so freaking nice uh, i love it um it, it just the paint job came out so wicked and and super awesome um and then we also do our warhammer miniatures you guys will actually see me hopefully next week wrap up uh our 40k orc general still working hard he's a pretty robust beast model he's got a lot of details but you guys can see that in there so you can see me painting that up on tuesdays and then wednesdays i tend to try to spotlight an indie uh, model company i have a few different indie companies i've gotten models from uh, and i want to show them off start painting them i have some giants some other stuff like it's going to be a kind of a wild card of a bunch of stuff i mean right now i'm focusing on those lex uh lexcom miniatures just because I want to get that homebrew campaign off the ground. So on Thursdays, you guys can see that. Uh, we should be playing another dose of League of Infamy. Or we might do our talk show tomorrow. But if you want to see a awesome geeky hour tomorrow, uh, we will be on. Uh, and you'll see us playing and having fun. As always. Uh, but I urge you to come. Uh, it's been super, super awesome and super, super cool. So uh, please become part of the community. Come and join for the live streams. Uh, contribute talk so sign up to follow sign up for notifications and uh check out the different links below to my website my patreon and the tip session button and again i want to say a big thank you to lexcom miniatures for not only being one of the coolest etsy people i've dealt with so easy so simple to get all my stuff uh but also being such a cool supporter of the channel uh and sending over a couple of free samples for me to play with i really 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 appreciate that and i cannot wait for my second order to come it's on the way it's in the mail so i'm so excited all right take care guys i'll see you at the next video